And then the header from DeVoke. And really not much there from Smith. It was almost more of the way Noda came out to challenge on the play that led to him falling on his backside. Mendonca spun around, but continuing is Torbjorn Alsith. Alsith out of Norway, the grad student who played at Duke. The long ball is going to be knocked down and collected once again by Alsith. Alsith very active, but has it stolen away by Wolf. And Wolf able to keep it alive on the near side for DeVoke. Trevor DeVoke now taking his space, plays it centrally for Griffin. Plenty of time and space. He'll let it fly, and that one's turned aside by the defense. As getting in the way was Luve Fredriksson, a junior from Sweden. There will be another goal kick here for the Pirates. And Seton Hall's been very strong defensively. Had a shutout in the opening victory over Central Connecticut, a 6-0 affair. They've since allowed 1-2-1 one, and one in their last three games. Tough foul from Duncan, at least according to the official that time. It'll be a restart here, just on the edge of the attacking third for the Pirates. Looks like setting up there on the far side will be J.P. Marin. Marin, the sophomore from Briarwood, New York. Briar's going to try to hold the top of the 18. Aviza at the top of his six. As they await the kick from Marin. Towards the box it comes. Lima wins it in the air. Second ball is going to be knocked aside by Kawasmi. And now DeVoke getting back. We'll try to turn it upfield. Has Lima on the run, if he can catch up with it. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Friars trying to remind the officials that the whole ball has to cross with the AR and a pretty good look. Very close play. Lima able to catch up with it initially. Here it's coming right at you. Did that whole ball cross? Ooh, very close, very close indeed. Doesn't matter now as Wolf and the Friars try to get it back to DeVoke. Was able to stay onside. DeVoke now having to split two, couldn't do it. But now with some time and space is Alsith. He'll blast it up towards the middle of the field. It's going to be headed down by Elias. And an incredulous look from him. He can't understand what the foul was. And it certainly seemed to be more of a 50-50 ball, but Stephen Elias wearing one of the captain's bands out there for the Pirates tonight. Here's Duncan now from the far side. Up ahead for Griffin. Christopher Roman. And now Griffin again, and that one's going to be picked off by Alsith. He'll try to dot, drop it in deep. Kawasmi there to watch it roll on down to Austin Aviza. He spent the beginning of his career at both UConn and Syracuse. Now redshirt senior here in Providence. Duncan. Punches it up ahead, trying to find Smith on the run, and Danny Griffith on the second ball. Plays it across. Mendonca, a shot blocked by Alsif. Lima coming in with a hard tackle. Mendonca able to knock it back, and now cleared away by Nathan Tremonti. A lot of contact, and Roman comes away with it. Now we'll have Griffin. Wide it comes to the near side for Serrano. He'll take his space. Lifts it up ahead. DeVoke on the run into the 18. Plays it across. And Noda scrambling off his line just in front of Davis Smith. As the Friars threaten again. With just over 37 minutes remaining in the first half. Friars have been not without their chances here in the first half. DeVoke using that great speed to get behind the defense. The quick cross in. Took a deflection off the defender that time, Luve Fredrickson. But Noda there to bail him out. Back down it comes, all the way to the foot of Eden O'Leary out of Tel Aviv, Israel. Again, a very international flavor to this Seton Hall team. 19 foreign players representing 12 different foreign countries. 
11 Americans on the roster for head coach Andreas Lindbergh. Up and out of play off the foot of Roman. It'll be a scene all throw. Collecting it'll be Kelmendi, freshman out of Sweden. Turns it over Mendonca now for Lima. And Serrano, the steady force back there for the Friars. We'll give it back for Lima. They'll trade passes, and now Serrano will look ahead forward. Playing it back for Kawasmi. Aviza, again, well out of his net. Duncan, with Wolf calling for it, wants it delivered to the near corner, but Duncan continues up the far side. Here's Devoke. Mendonca on the run if he wants to use him. Lays it out wide. Mendonca now into the box. And that one knocked aside. Fredriksson. One of five Swedish players on this Seton Hall team. And now Serrano. Chased down by Elias. Griffin with some space. Has Mendonca on the run, but that one's a little too deep. And an easy scoop for the netminder, Andreas Nota. Nota now will drop it to the turf before letting it fly up ahead across midfield. Good strike, but right to the Friars. Skimmed off a Roman. And it'll be tracked down by Duncan, and now Aviza will reset things. Quickly wide for Serrano. Serrano will turn it back for his keeper. Kawasmi now. Looking for some movement as the Friars work it across that back line again. Here's Serrano. Chips it on ahead towards the top of the box. Fredrickson there with the initial touch. Opportunity for Wolf and Noda. Again, able to get a hand on it. And that one turned out to be a little bit more dangerous than it initially looked. Serrano with the big lift ahead. Fredrickson didn't get a good first touch, and Wolf. Just trying to get a foot on it, but Noda able to get the big mitts up. Off the head of Serrano, down for Kawasmi now. As the Friars try to work some magic on the near side, Wolf. They're now cleared up ahead. Picked off by the Pirates, Alex Pozeski. Tried to send it into the corner. Mendonca will settle. Pushes it for Griffin. Griffin. Absorbs a little hit from Alseth. Oh, slick move that time from Andrea Borg. Mendonca coming back to challenge. Into the mixer it comes. Roman there for the first touch. Elias was able to block the clear. And now the instant offense on the run. Smith the target. What a punt from Aviza. Got him in stride. And the Friars will earn their first corner kick of the evening. Friars always a threat on these set pieces. Keep an eye on the number nine, Davis Smith. Standing in at 6-7. Of course, plenty of other players that could finish for the Friars, and that's what makes them such a dangerous team on the offensive end. Can't really key in on just one guy. Serrano sends it in. First touch was a pirate, so was the second. Griffin trying to track it down. Wolf now. Back for Griffin, and around it goes for Lima. Lima. It's going to be tripped, they're going to say. Alex Pozeski committing the foul. In a not great spot if you're a Seton Hall fan. It was almost in slow motion the way it happened. Lima kind of was going for it, and down went Pozeski. And had taken out his leg there, so now a talk between the Portuguese triumvirate of the Friars, Mendonca, Lima, and Serrano. We'll be looking at what appears to be a five-man wall to start. 
Top of the box will be held. And the Friars now an opportunity here for the first of the match. Lima puts it on frame and a great save from Nota. And Nota having to earn that one. And we talked about him earlier. He would have to be on top of his game to give the Pirates a chance. Andrea Nota coming up with a spectacular save, moving towards his right. What a great bending ball, and what a phenomenal look from our crew here in Providence tonight on the Big East Digital Network. Everybody bringing their A game tonight for the conference opener. To the back post it goes, and headed away. The foot of Roman, who's been snake bitten, had a couple of good chances against both Sacred Heart and Harvard in the last two home games here at Chappie Field. Now about a third of the way through the first half. Friars pretty much dominating across the board. Fired three shots, make it four now, two of them on net. Pirates still looking for their first shot of the game. But again, Seton Hall more of a defensive team so far this season. Mendonca trying to win it in the air, glances off his head. Roman able to send it into the stands. And now Seton Hall threatening. They'll dump it into the 18. Aviza quickly will roll it out for Wolf. Wolf, a nice job to get around Alseth. Devoke. Buys himself a little bit of time and now has Serrano. And he'll switch the point of attack for Duncan. Again, Seton Hall pretty much giving the Friars free pass until they hit the middle of the field. Nice ball by Serrano, but knocked aside by Tremonti. To the near side, it comes for Borg. Has some space to work with as Griffin tracks all the way back. Borg now came to a standstill, was able to deliver it back for Tremonti. And now towards the top of the box, and Duncan able to make a nice sliding tackle to knock that one out of the 18, or it would have been a good opportunity for the Pirates if Elias was in there looking for the strike. Shot blocked from Marin. Seton Hall getting frisky for the first time in the attacking third. Nice decision that time out of Eden O'Leary with some pressure from DeVoke. And Serrano will slice it out of bounds with 28 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Centrally it comes now for Torbjorn Alsith. And over for Tremonti. He'll put it towards the net, but that misses everything high and wide. It'll be a goal kick for the Friars. Pretty clean game so far. Just five total fouls, three against the home side and two against the visiting Pirates. Zavisa gets ready now for the restart. On a line it goes for Roman. The quick flick ahead for Devoke. Devoke now. We'll take some space for Mendonca. Griffin had a touch, but couldn't quite hold. Borg taken down by Wolf. And we'll have a free kick upcoming for the Pirates. Pretty much a run-of-the-mill foul in the middle of the field. Is Wolf just a hair too late on the tackle? Now the Pirates trying to get something going once again. Mendonca comes up with a loose ball now for Duncan. He'll send it deep, trying to target Smith. All the way back for the keeper, Noda, off the foot of O'Leary. Now some time for Tremonti. He'll take his space up the near flank. Up ahead it goes. Quick one-touch from Marin. 
Broken up by the Friars again, Lima. His pass rejected, but finds its way to Duncan. Now Kawasmi looks over his options. Duncan will accelerate through the midfield. Drops it down for Mendonca. Tries a little heel flick to himself. Was waiting on the run for Rome and gets it back off of the defender. Trying to target Wolf. Now back for Serrano. Left foots it up towards the net, and that went a little too deep. And he knew that as soon as he struck the ball. So another goal kick coming up for the Pirates. As both teams looking to pick up a key victory here this evening. Friars looking to make it three in a row. Seton Hall trying to end a three-game losing streak. It's the 35th meeting between these two sides, a series that goes back to 1982. Providence with a 16, 12, and 6 mark all time, including last year's 1-0 double overtime victory over the Pirates. It was Stephen Kilday in the 102nd meeting to pull out the win for Providence. Here's Lima. Long ball to the far side. Roman trying to catch up with it. He'll get there. Trying to get around his man, O'Leary. Plays it across. Headed away, though, by Marin. And further away for Elias. And now the counter for the Pirates. Five, five, five. And there's going to be a foul on the Friars around the middle of the field. It's either Wolf or Lima holding up the advancing Pirates. And a quick conversation between the official and Joao Serrano. It'll be a restart right around midfield for Seton Hall. Seton Hall 6-7-2 last year. 2-6-1 when it came to Big East play. In the box it goes, one by Smith. O'Leary now. Excuse me, that was Kelmendi. Dennis Kelmendi, another one of those Swedish players out there for the Pirates. Going down at the corner of the box. Look to be Vittorio Argeri, but get up, says the official. Griffin now. Looking for the clearance and smashes it off of the Pirate on the far side. I believe that was Pozeski. Now Visa will set up the goal kick here for Providence. Line drive over for Mendonca. Now Roman will settle. All the way back for Kowasmi. Duncan. There's a little soft space there for Mendonca. He'll try to drop it deep. And we're going to have a foul that time. And that was O'Leary as he just shoved Devoke. Impeding his progress. So we are midway through the first half. Glad you could join us here on the Big East Digital Network. Presented by SoFi. These two sides kicking off their Big East campaign. Friars looking to make some more noise again. Pick third in the preseason poll. Coach Stewart and his staff looking on. and Trusting that his men on the far side will make the right decision on this kick. It'll be Serrano and Griffin talking things over and really that trio of Griffin, Serrano, Mendonca. So integral to the success of this team over the last couple of years. So it'll be Serrano. 
Seton Hall trying to hold that PK spot as the line. Into the box it comes and then promptly headed away. Griffin able to track it down for Serrano. He'll leave it wide for Lima. And now Duncan as the Providence backs kind of flip-flop spots. And that'll be a Seton Hall throw in now. Getting ready to toss it back in will be Nathan Tremonti, senior from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Long toss up ahead, but over everybody except for Kawasmi. He pops it up high. Griffin got the touch for Devoke, but he plays it off of Kelmendi. Duncan now. An errant pass, and it's recollected by the Pirates, but then turned right back over to Griffin, who's able to keep it in. Little flick. Here's Smith. Fredrickson for Nota. And Nota barely able to get it away from Smith. Opportunity, though, still there for the Friars. Espen Wolf continues to take space, fights off one man. And unable to keep it in play was Andrea Borg out of Malta. So it'll be another corner kick here for the Friars. Second of the night. Serrano will come over to take it. It's good hustle by Andrea Borg to get back, but just couldn't quite keep it in play. And this time it'll be Danny Griffin from the near side. He'll leave it short for Serrano. Across it comes the header and a goal! Paolo Lima from Joao Serrano. And the Friars strike first in the Big East opener. For Paolo Lima, that's going to be his second goal of the season. A brilliant strike with the head. And the Friars lead this one 1-0. One Little Portuguese dance as well from Lima. The Friar fans are happy here tonight in Providence. 25th minute goal from Paulo Lima. To break the goose egg on the scoreboard early on, Serrano and probably Wolf will each pick up assists, excuse me, Griffin. So here it is, it was a short corner. Serrano plays it across and there on the back end. Nobody staying with Lima. And a textbook header right away from the keeper. And the Friars have the 1-0 lead on Lima's second of the season. We'll see Seton Hall's able to ratchet up the intensity. They're still looking for their first shot of the game. And into the box it comes. Serrano there to away it with his head. Further flicked aside by Lima. And now ahead it comes. Serrano there to safe play. Spinning away was Argeri. And now Mendonca trying to dribble out of trouble, plays it ahead for Roman who pops it up. Smith and DeVoke trying to cause trouble on the far side, but it's away by Fredrickson. It'll stay with the Friars. Roman, soft toss up ahead for DeVoke. DeVoke doing all he can to fight off his man, O'Leary. Roman able to help him out. Roman, Smith, now Griffin up ahead for Smith, and Nota off his line in a big collision and a foul, and a little extra from Fredrickson. It's a 50-50 challenge between two big guys, Smith at 6'7", Nota. And 5-11. No malintent here for sure. Nice little flick from Griffin and Smith. Trying to get there, but again, Nota so quick off his line. Puts himself in a good spot to make that play. So it'll be a restart for 
for the Pirates. And the Friars have been able to create multiple chances here tonight. And Nota, a couple of fantastic saves, already credited with three here this evening. The Friars will take their time on the far side. Roman now, the long toss, targeting Smith, but a little too far over his head. And this time knocked out by the Friars. It was the sixth first half goal scored by Providence this season. Came in outscoring opponents eight to four on the year. Espen Wolf able to deny that pass from Nathan Tremonti. And Tremonti now will survey the scene for his throw. Looks to get it in that corner, but Lima able to help break it up. Into the 18 it came, but away by the Friar D. Griffin now. We'll leave it back. It's punched up ahead. Smith trying to collect. We'll work with DeVoke. Nice hesitation by DeVoke, who's wrapped up and thrown to the ground by Borg. Much to the frustration of the Pirates. But a great hesitation that time by DeVoke. We'll let some of the traffic pass by. And it was Andrea Borg getting back and wrapping him up, spinning him to the turf. Griffin and the Friars now looking for more. As we are in the 30th minute of play. Now Griffin will just send it back for Serrano. And he'll further it back for Kawasmi. Switch to the far side for Duncan. Now he'll take his space. Duncan. Advances it for Griffin, now gets it back and swallowed up by the Seton Hall defense. Here's Borg dribbling out of trouble. We'll leave it wide. Kelmendi looking for his man Argeri. Argeri sends it towards the 18, but it's blocked by Duncan. And Seton Hall will have its first corner kick of the night. But before that, wholesale changes for both sides. For the Pirates, checking in James Boot, the freshman from England. Also Carlton McKenzie, also from England. And CJ Teebling, who hasn't seen any action this year. A member of the Big East all-rookie team and the second team last year. Teebling led Seton Hall with six goals and two assists, but was not fit to play yet until tonight. So his first action of 2019 comes here against the Friars. Here comes the corner. A bit of an in-swinger, falls to the feet of the Pirates, but it's a wade out to Dennis Kelmendi. He'll blast it back in, cleared aside by Mendonca. And now all the way back for Kelmendi. So in for the Friars were Andwalem Chisholm. Kevin Vang, and Gilles Santos. Friars don't lose much when those guys enter the match. All of them quite capable scorers in their own right. Lima is trying to find Santos, but now back the other way come the Pirates. McKenzie, as we had a foul and initially, uh, I think the referee was seeing if there was any real advantage. The go against Lima for his challenge on Elias. And a restart in a pretty good spot here for Seton Hall. Stepping up to take it will be James Boot. Freshman from Southampton, England. Boot will send it towards the corner of the 18, targeting Teebling. Back for Kelmendi, he'll lift it up towards the 18. Away by Roman and further away by Vang. 
Yeah, it'll trickle out of bounds for a Seton Hall throw. Again, C.J. Teebling wearing the number nine for Seton Hall. One of the top players in the Big East a season ago, but trying to get a little too fancy that time and resulting in a Providence throw. Aspen Wolf will chuck it on ahead. Santos now. Mendonca working in close quarters and right off the arm of Nathan Tremonti. Really not much he could have done on that one. No time to react, but still a handball as he did gain an advantage. And the Friars will take some time here. So we're on with a quick restart. And here's another look. Mendonca flicking it up and right off the arm there. Fairly easy call there for the officials. Roman will leave it wide for Kevin Vang. Vang had a very nice goal against Sacred Heart two games ago. Also started in that match. Nota will finally pick it up after some light pressure from Santos. And now we'll lay it back on the turf. Sends it up ahead. Tiebling trying to flick it on with his head. But to the foot of Kawasmi and now Serrano. Espen Wolf. Trying to play it ahead, but smashed out of bounds by Tremonti. And now Wolf again with a throw. Just over 10 and a half to play in half number one. And Wallam Chisholm, owner of a pair of goals as well this season, the sophomore from North Attleboro, Massachusetts. And the official resetting this throw here for Providence. And it comes for Lima on for Andwalem Chisholm. Nice work by Fredrickson to absorb the contact and win the challenge. And again, the delayed call. It did seem like Seton Hall was in a pretty good spot. Kelmendi trying to work through the midfield, broken up by Mendonca. Duncan now punches it forward, but out of the reach of Tiago Mendonca. Now another substitution for the Pirates. Sean McLeod out of Troon, Scotland. Played his undergrad ball at Notre Dame. Now a grad student at Seton Hall. He'll replace Andrea Borg, the freshman from Malta. And it comes, but knocked down to the feet of Mendonca. Vang. Kawasmi now sends it up ahead. Over the head of Chisholm, and now across it comes for Boot. He'll leave it back for his keeper. Nota sends it up. Kind of floated it up there. And this time, jump from Wolf turns into a throw in for the Pirates. And it comes off the chest of McKenzie. And now Teebling. Teebling, a big boy at six foot, 211 pounds. Santos trying to get out of trouble. Wolf trying to help him out. And a nice stick by Serrano. Mendonca leaves it back for Austin Aviza. He'll long ball it up ahead where it's won by Fredrickson. Lima now. Friars have some space on the far side if they want it. Roman. And now Kawasmi. Joao Serrano. Kind of caught it in between two of his men. Flicked on by McLeod. And now Duncan given chase. He'll pop it down towards Aviza. Serrano. 
Quickly ahead, Vang. Wolf, and now ahead for Santos. And Santos getting pulled from behind by Fredrickson. Plays it in towards the 18, and it's Nota who is able to scoop it up. Luve Fredrickson, the beneficiary of the play on advantage call that time. You know, Santos had him beat, had to reach out and grab his jersey. Tiebling asking his men to push up as nobody was there for that second ball. And Serrano, now Kowasmi, under seven to play. And Wallum with Santos and Fredrickson putting his head low into a dangerous spot. Quickly ahead, here is a McLeod, excuse me, McKenzie. Mendonca trying to track back. Roman able to break it up. McKenzie frustrated, but. Play on, says the official again. Serrano is now a little bit more extended pressure here out of the Seton Hall Pirates, their reserves. Trying to put some more pressure on the Providence backs. Wolf wins it with Vang trying to chase it down. And outside it goes for Kelmendi. Dennis Kelmendi. That's right into the chest of Lima. And the target that time, Sean McLeod, but. And the referee stopping the clock to talk to McLeod. I don't think he likes something to do with his socks or shin guards. We'll see. We're getting the same look that we're getting, so. Well, didn't like something about whatever McLeod was doing over there with his socks, but either way, we're back to action here. Mendonca has it poked away. Round it comes now for Boot. Now the opportunity, Tremonti plays it ahead. McKenzie grabbed by Lima for a moment. Now broken up by Lima, and it'll be a throw in for the Pirates. Tremonti. Gets it in, and now the crossing pass off the foot of James Boot had been picked off, but it finds its way all the way back down in the Seton Hall defensive third. Under five to play here in the first half. Friars leading on a Paolo Lima goal in the 25th minute. Joao Serrano, the assist. You could possibly argue for Griffin one as well. Tiebling. Trying to let one fly, leaves it back for McKenzie. And those two have certainly had an impact since checking in. Santos. Trying to wiggle out of trouble. Kelmendi. Now they give it up to Santos, who just couldn't get it past O'Leary. Roman now. And here comes Kelmendi. To the middle of the field it comes for Elias, who's been relatively quiet in this one. Pirates still looking for their first shot of the game. And that one will trickle out of bounds for a Friar throw. Roman will wait for his mates to get up the field. Send it over the head of Teebling for Kowasmi. He'll quickly flick it on for Serrano. It's Teebling on his horse trying to catch up. Down it goes towards the top of the box, but successfully cleared by Fredrickson. Serrano sends it right back, but McKenzie there to break it up. And Serrano returns the favor. Lima will leave it back for Kowasmi with three minutes to go in the first half.
Serrano now will push it a little bit further up the field for Mendonca. Mendonca trying to free up the shot, puts it towards the net, but a little bit too high as he, you can see, was leaning back just a bit. Not a bad bid, trying to catch Nota, perhaps a little bit out of place. Here was that strike again there. You saw just a little lean back at the last second. That sent that one well over everything. McLeod will send it to the far side. Tiebling couldn't quite get there. Romano forced to play it out of bounds. Tiebling able to leave it as it comes across the net. Nobody on the back end there for the Pirates. With under two minutes to play, Austin Aviza will set up the goal kick. As Wolf had been calling for it on the near side, but Aviza milking this one for as much as he can. The referee allowing Friars to kill some clock here. Final minutes of the first half. Long ball one in the air by Elias. And then Tiebling went down a little awkwardly. As he battled with Lima. Long ball for Santos. Good first touch to settle. Has Kelmendi to beat. Kelmendi though, a well-timed challenge. And able to keep it in, but right for Lima. Duncan, as we are under a minute to play. Kawasmi. And Serrano will hold. See if the Friars go for one last adventure up the field. Putting a strike for a little insurance before the end of the half. Serrano for Mendonca and now for Chisholm. Chisholm has Wolf on the run. He'll give it to him. Wolf now, left foots it across. Roman converging in. Here's Mendonca, a little half folly, and perhaps getting a piece of it was Chisholm at the end, but time running out here on the first half. Nota has it skimmed to the near side for Tiebling. Now push it further along. Final seconds. And Duncan will have the final touch for the Friars. 45 minutes in the books. The Providence College Friars, a 1-0 lead thanks to Paolo Lima in the 25th minute, assisted by Joao Serrano after a short corner kick. So, time for us to step aside for just a few moments. Right now, we'll have a Big East update from John Fanta and Megan Caffrey. That's coming your way right Welcome into the Big East studios in New York City. I'm Megan Caffrey, joined alongside my partner, John Fanta. We welcome you into the first fall sports update of the season. We're so excited to be back. Music to my ears after a successful non-conference play around the Big East. Now we've got several teams across the league that take momentum as the conference grind revs up, Megan, and that's what you need to get through it. Let's waste no time and get into three things that you need to know around the conference, starting with field hockey. Three Big East field hockey teams are ranked in this week's NFHCA poll. UConn checking in at number four, Liberty at 13, and John admits to four-game win streak. Old Dominion cracked the top 25 for the first time this season, coming in at number 22. In volleyball, two teams were in the top 20 this week, Creighton hitting a season best ranking, coming in at 15, and Marquette, who's only dropped two matches on the season, remains in the top 10 at number eight this week. And John, women's soccer, they had some impressive non-conference wins. They did. Georgetown is the cream of the crop in the Big East. Dave Nolan has built a national powerhouse. And for the Hoyas, they went through a changing of the throne in goal from Ariel Sheckman to now Anna Lee. The freshman's coming off a clean sheet, the first of her career, and it came against a tough opponent in a ranked West Virginia team that got shut down offensively mm -hmm. at Shaw Field. For the Hoyas, they've got returning veterans. I think of Paula Germino Watnick, Amanda Carolyn, and then you've got a freshman keeper who now has momentum as conference play inches closer. That is going to be a tough team to handle, but watch out for Butler. Watch mm -hmm. out for Providence, too. 
Let's turn to Big East men's soccer. Now, they had a really exciting non-conference season as well, and now things kick into gear with conference play starting up this weekend, and three teams are in the top 25 for Big East men's soccer. And rightly so. For BE football, it got started on opening night. Yeah. Big East men's soccer was ready from the get-go. I look at a 9-0-1 record on opening night. Xavier making a statement over then number three, Akron, and that got the Musketeers national attention. Sometimes all it takes is one win, and for St. John's that was the case. They went to NC State, they challenged themselves, and got a victory. Their first over an ACC team since 2010. And then Georgetown, Brian Weiss is reigning Big East champions. The Hoyas went out west, UC Irvine, UCLA. They rolled past them, and then commanded UConn last weekend. And John, you mentioned St. John's. They are off to a historic start for the season. They are ranked ninth this week. That is the program best for the Red Storm. Such a steady sophomore class, only in their second years, but the Johnnies have several spark players that can deliver. Skage Siemenson, Tani Olawashi, and a role change for Mr. Brandon Knapp from the back line into the midfield, and it's paying off. And I actually chatted with Brandon Knapp about what's paying off for him personally and this Red Storm squad. The number nine St. John's Red Storm is off to its best start in program history at 6-0-0 after taking down Columbia. I'm now joined by midfielder Brandon Knapp, who scored two goals in the Red Storm's 5-1 victory Monday night. Brandon, you started off the scoring for your team in the second half. How did the offense really open up in the second? Yeah, in the second half, we really got going. Um, we created a lot of chances. Uh, I really think it started on the defensive end. You know, Coach always talks about our big thing is defensive effort and defensive intensity. I think we really picked it up there. We won a lot of balls in the midfield, got the ball forward early. Uh, and then we got the ball wide and, and got guys in the box like, like I did on the goal. And uh, we finished off our chances, so. I'm glad, uh, glad to see we got, got five goals. It was good. Brandon, talking about that defense, looking at your goalkeeper situation this season, you have a tandem goalkeeper situation with yeah. Lucas Efron and John Hoffman. They're sharing the net. How has the dynamic been between the two of them? Uh, the dynamic's great. They're both really working hard every day in practice. Uh, I really like having both of them back there. It's, it's really good. Uh, they're both leaders from the back starting. You know, it always starts in the back with communication. But they're doing really well, and not, not letting out many chances, not letting out many goals. So I'm really happy with that. Your team came in ranked number nine in the latest polls this week. That's the first time St. John's has been in the top ten in six years. What is behind uh, your team's success? Yeah, uh, it's been really awesome. We've just been working hard every day. Uh, we have a lot of different guys who can play a lot of different positions, a lot of different, a lot of depth, which is which has really helped us. Um, you know, starting from the coaches, they've just been preaching to work hard every day. Uh, you know, our preparation has been really good every game. Something that's been important for us, we've been finding a way to win every game. So whether we face a lot of different challenges, a lot of different adversity, but we found a way, so it's been good for us. When you say finding a way to win, what was the way that you your team found to win against Columbia? Uh, we just turned it on the second half. You know, we had a, had a tough halftime talk after the first half was kind of slow, a little bit sluggish, but we just kept, turned it around. Um, one we you know they were the Columbia's a really good team a lot of good players uh, as we saw so we just created a lot of chances and really uh you know grinded it out Brandon you're only a sophomore and this season you were named one of your team's captains where does that leadership come from uh I, I think I'm just a natural leader you know I really like like uh being a leader a lot it's a lot there's a lot of different responsibilities obviously to take on as a sophomore but I'm really enjoying it so far. You know, uh, my, my other captains and I were doing a really good job so far. And I'm just loving being a leader of the team right now. Last season, your team had the second highest total of freshmen on your squad in the nation. This year, 12 of your team's 15 goals have actually come from that sophomore class. How has your sophomore class grown from last season to now? You know, I think we've grown a lot. You know, last year was a big step for us. We had, you know, we were freshmen, so kind of getting used to everything at first but you know we obviously have some experience now we're really all coming together we have a, we've uh, developed a lot of different chemistry and stuff so I think uh, it's good for us to you know that we got uh, 12 of the goals it's really good how would you describe the overall chemistry of this year's team oh the chemistry is great you know we're, we're a great group of guys you know everyone loves each other uh, we love coming to practice every day hanging out with each other so the chemistry is really good who's probably going to keep 
practices the lightest? Who's the funniest on the team? <laughs> uh, funniest on the team got to be uh, Kadeem Joseph. Uh, he's he's always always got to make it make it light. Um, who else? Matt Forster. He's he's a funny guy. Uh, maybe Johan Aquilon. So one of the French guys. Ah. A lot of different funny guys. So. <laughs> Any saying in a different language out on the field? Oh yeah, we got a lot of different languages. You know, we got we got the Norwegians speaking to each other. Now we got two Germans. You know, it's pretty cool to see the different cultures and stuff. Your team will take on the 19th ranked Xavier squad this Friday on the Big East Digital Network. What are you looking forward to in opening up conference play going in undefeated? Yeah, it's it's I'm really excited. I know we're all excited. We're ready to go uh, starting conference play. I'm really glad. We, we came in undefeated. It's kind of sent a message to the conference, but uh, we're ready to go. I know Xavier's a really tough team. It's going to be a really tough game, uh, just like every other game in the Big East, but we're ready to go. What's that message that you're sending to the conference? Uh, just we're, we're here. We're ready to go. You know, we're going to have a good season uh, along with all the other teams, but we're ready to go. Brandon, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. From our studios in New York City, he's John Fanta. I'm Megan Caffrey. Thank you for watching and enjoy the second half of your game. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. And welcome back to Chappie Field here inside Anderson Stadium in Providence. We are at the half. The Friars with a 1-0 lead over the Seton Hall Pirates in the Big East opener for both teams. Time to take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Pretty much dominated by the Friars from the opening minutes. Friars with an opportunity. Danny Griffin inside the 18. And DeVoke able to get the shot on, but... Andrea Nota able to come up with a big save. The Friars will go on the attack again to Trevor DeVoke. Played it across, but off a defender into the arms of Nota once again. Paolo Lima would get involved playing it up ahead and then got taken down, which would lead to a free kick for the Friars. And this one nearly finding the back of the net, but coming almost out of nowhere. Andrea Nota making a fabulous save. Seton Hall would muster one of its rare attacks in the first half. They were unable to get a single shot off in the opening frame. And here came the goal in the 25th minute across for Paolo Lima, you know, perfectly squared up for the header, putting it out of reach of Nota on a great ball from Joao Serrano. 
And Lima would celebrate in style, picking up his second goal of the season to put the Friars on top 1-0. Smiles around for the Friar faithful and even a little dance from the talented player from Portugal. The Friars leading this one 1-0 through the first 45. As it's time to take a look now at some of the stats from the first half as well. Again, pretty much dominated by the Friars. A lot of goose eggs on the stat sheet for the Pirates. No shots, no shots on goal. And they weren't even offsides once either. Fouls the Friars uh, doubling up the Pirates in that department, also tripling them up in terms of corner kick opportunities. And the shots, of course, the 6-0 advantage with three of them shots on goal. The one finding the back of the net off the head of Paolo Lima. So time for us to step aside once again. We'll be back with more from the half in Providence. This is the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Once again, to Chappie Field at Anderson Stadium, where we are at the half, just about a minute away from the start of the second half. And time to take a look back at the week that was in Big East men's soccer. As we'll take a look at the honor roll honorees. A good talent there, for sure. Right in the middle of the graphic, Joao Serrano. Really the quarterback of this Providence team from that left back position. He has some outstanding company as well for that weekly honor roll and not only was there an honor roll but we had some players of the week as well in the big east and there we see it offensive player of the week and the best defensive player of the week representing georgetown and st john's respectively and those all in action as well this weekend and finally the big east goalkeeper of the week carson williams from Villanova and then from Butler, the freshman of the week in Wilmer Cabrera. Again, a bunch of talent in this league. It'll be on display over the course of this season, so stay tuned in to the Big East Digital Network as we have Paolo Lima and his 25th minute goal. The difference in this one so far. Friars in the second half here will advance from left to right. And of course, Seton Hall in those road blues from right to left here in half number two. To the near side it comes and pushed up ahead. As it looks like the Friars have returned to their starting 11. No real surprise there. Seton Hall, a couple of its reserves still out there, most notably C.J. Teebling, who had been unavailable to coach Lindbergh to start the season. Seeing his first game action here tonight. That's a big boost for sure for the visitors as they've been wanting to get him back on the pitch. It finally happens here tonight. Now the long toss into the box over Davis Smith, and that's hard to do. Roman now an opportunity. We'll work it to the near side. And they're going to say... Seton Hall ball, much to the dismay of the Providence crowd. One in the air by Lima. And now Mendonca trying to settle for Griffin. He'll spin it for DeVoke. Gets it back in the corner, has Kelmendi to beat. Plays it across, but a little too far across. Wolf trying to track it down. 
He'll send it back for Serrano, who had the assist on the Lima goal. Here it comes for Smith. And it poked away in a timely challenge from Kelmendi. Now Kawasmi will settle things for the Friars. Serrano lifts it forward for DeVoke. Fredrickson able to step up, but plays it right back to Serrano. Malcolm Duncan, plenty of time and space to work with. He'll play it for Griffin. And now Griffin will continue to hold. Davis Smith back for Duncan. And the Friars forced to go all the way back to their keeper, Austin Aviza. Light pressure from Tiebling. Roman flicks it on for Griffin. And now for Roman. Devoke. A nice leave that time by Smith. Griffin into the 18 and headed wide of the net by Trevor Devoke. But a nice buildup. Quick ball movement by the Friars to earn an opportunity on the offensive end. Seton Hall, again, a solid defensive team, but have had its struggles on the offensive end. They do have seven on the season, but six of the goals came in their 6-0 win over Central Connecticut in their opener. Just one goal in their last three, all losses. Here's Roman. Devoke now, leaving it for Mendonca, around for Griffin. Fryer so good, at just ping-ponging it through the midfield. Serrano now. Griffin and Wolf making the run. Can he get him the ball? No, he'll turn it back for Serrano. And now they'll reset all the way back for Malcolm Duncan. No one within about 15 yards of him. And finally, he's tracked down by Argeri. Into the mixer, it comes. Oh, Smith was waiting, but Fredrickson able to away it with his head. And now Serrano cutting towards the top of the box. Tried to deflect it off of a defender, and they're going to say last touch by Serrano, so it'll be a goal kick. Davis Smith nearly able to pick up his third header goal of the season. But a sneaky little play by Luve Fredrickson. Keep this one at just a one goal margin up to now. Nota. One initially by Mendonca. Second ball to Wolf. And now Smith back for Mendonca. Across it comes for Roman. Roman gets to the center of the field, trying to play it deep for Wolf. Stays in, but eventually cleared away. Now Serrano will leave it back for Kawasmi. Lima. And some more pressure here out of the Pirates. Settled by Mendonca. Roman now. Griffin with plenty of space. Cuts back centrally. There's Roman to his right, but he'll send it further right for Devoke. Devoke able to get past the first man, trying to let it fly. Shot block that time. James Boot. Devoke. Mendonca flicks it ahead. Devoke making the run, but Fredrickson able to cause some more problems defensively. Has broken up a couple of nice scoring opportunities for the Friars. Wide it goes now for McLeod. And all the way back. O'Leary and now Kelmendi. Kelmendi looking for some runners. Nobody really in the open. Griffin and Roman work the near side. And all the way back for Kawasmi. Ryers do such a good job of switching the point of attack. Lima now trying to dump it over the defense. O'Leary the first touch. Now Mendonca shot and wide. There's the volley from about 24 yards out off the foot of Tiago Mendonca. Had the game winner against Harvard in the last outing earlier this week. 
preseason All Big East selection after earning a spot on the first team last year. Well, the Pirates again trying to get something going in the offensive third. Argeri slipped it through the D, but too far in front of Teebling. And now Aviza kind of sliced that one a little bit, where it's won initially by Kilmendi. Mendonca. Griffin, and now all the way back for Serrano. Joao Serrano will play it wide for Wolf. Trying to get it in space for Davis Smith. He'll head on down to the corner, now pull it back. Chips it over for Griffin. Wolf was calling for it. Roman will deliver it wide for DeVoke. Has had success beating his man off this side. He does it again. DeVoke inside. Shot blocked by the defense. O'Leary again. And now Duncan trying to keep the possession alive. He'll send it further deep, but that one will trail out for a goal kick. So Trevor DeVoke looking very dangerous from this near side. Has been able to get past Dennis Kelmendi on multiple occasions, but... Unable to find the finishing touch yet tonight. Provoke already with two goals and two assists on the season. Lima wins it in the air. And Fredrickson, a little bit gimpy after that challenge with Smith. Winds up all the way deep onto the foot of Aviza. Who's going to make Teebling come near him. And then a little bit of shenanigans for both players at the end of that sequence. As Aviza kind of leaning up and Teebling leaning into him at the same time. Smith, the initial win in the air, but Kelmendi now will play it out of bounds. He was trying to work with McKenzie. And you could just see the frustration on some of the Seton Hall players' faces. It has been a struggle so far tonight. Still no shots. Friars able to fire 10 so far. As Griffin keeps it moving to the center. Making the run on the far side of Serrano. He'll leave it deep for Mendonca. Griffin now. Looking for DeVoke, but cleared away by the D. Boot sends it up ahead. Lima there for the tackle. And now Duncan. And Duncan and Kowasmi will exchange a couple of passes before getting it up for Lima. Friars will be more than happy to just Work it along the back line until they get any kind of pressure out of the Pirates. Duncan now sends it forward. Mendonca on the run. Battling in the corner, and it's going to be a goal kick. And we're going to get a couple of changes now for the Pirates. Steven Elias checking back in, as is Andrea Borg. Out went Teebling and McKenzie. Lima. Griffin, and he'll leave it back for Aviza. Wolf trying to keep it in on that far side. Quick throw up coming now from Tremonti. Nice little flick for Elias. Tried to zigzag past Lima, but he wasn't having it. Near side it comes now for Kelmendi. Kelmendi sends it towards the 18. Aviza there for the easy play. And here comes that big punt on a line drive. Kelmendi, though, the first touch. Just able to get it past Davis Smith. And Kelmendi trying to walk that one off. He caught the bottom of Davis Smith's foot. 
Seems to be all right, though, as he leaves it back for O'Leary. Kilmendi now with some time and space. Plays it forward, but nobody home. And Aviza will hold and dribble on down to that far corner. Obligatory pressure out of Vittorio Argiri. Well, the Friars can get back to business on the offensive side of things. Punt up ahead. Roman flicks it onward, but Kilmendi there to disrupt. Duncan will leave it back again for a visa, and he'll chip it on up. High pop up this time. And O'Leary able to get the first touch on it. Lima the win in the middle of the field. Now Griffin up ahead, staying onside was Devok. Two on three, make it two on six now. Devok into the 18. Trying to leave it back for Wolf, and Wolf able to dance out of trouble. Into the 18 it comes, Davis Smith. The big collision with Nota again. Play on, says the official. And now we're going to have a whistle. As Smith and Nota able to combine once again. And I think we're going to get a card, yep. So David Smith is going to pick up a card for this play here. Again, it's a 50-50 ball. Nota was a little bit late in getting to it, but Yellow Justice served to Davis Smith, first card of the night on either side. It's been a relatively clean game to this point. And there's the explanation from the official saying, I've asked you a couple times to be careful with the netminder. And I think that's probably the third time they've collided over the course of this one. Pirates now trying to work that far side. Lima and the Providence counter through Devok. O'Leary, now Navarre. Argiri tries to settle, leaves it for Borg. Borg trying to get around Duncan. And a nice timed challenge that time by Malcolm Duncan. Able to knock it out of bounds. Now a corner kick for the Pirates. Sean McLeod, grad student from Scotland. Undergrad at Notre Dame. And across it comes. Lima there. So he was able to meet O'Leary. And a tough touch by Borg. The Friars will escape for now. Roman looking things over. Now the long toss ahead. Santos a little flip. And Wallam Chisholm trying to put some pressure on Fredrickson. As it goes wide for Tremonti. Argiri. Tremonti once again lifts it towards the 18, and that one's going to be wide of everything for another goal kick. No subs at the table yet. And Santos comes over to meet with Coach Stewart for some instructions. Aviza now will get set to put this one back in play. Elias, and the first touch now out on Duncan. You can feel the intensity picking up little by little here over the course of this second half. Challenge is getting a little stronger, and ooh. It looked like Argiri did a nice job of selling that one. And it'll be a 
free kick for the Pirates. McLeod, Boot. We'll look at a two-man wall of the Friars. As Aviza gets them at the proper angle he wants. Some shenanigans at the top of the box as players jockey for position. Here comes the kick. Kawasmi off his chest. And offsides, the call by the AR on the far side. So Visa will blast it back into play. And now Visa up ahead. Santos trying to get a flick on it. And coming out of the pack is Kevin Vang. One spin, two spins. And the fancy footwork of Kevin Vang keeps it with the Friars. And now we're going to get a change, make it two changes. As we're turning to action, it'll be CJ Tiebling and also JP Marin. So again, Tiebling, member of the Big East all-rookie team and the second team last year. Hasn't seen any action until tonight. And he could be a handful to deal with. Over six feet, over 200 pounds. And Wallam Chisholm trying to beat Fredrickson. And Fredrickson, the safe play out of bounds. Wolf will leave it for Lima, now get it back. All the way back further for Aviza. On a line for Roman. Glancing header for Santos. And has it knocked out of bounds and gets a little bit extra that time from Eden O'Leary. Right below us here in the press box. Roman. That one blasted high in the air. Kevin Vang giving chase this time. As it continues further wide from a cloud. Settled by Andrea Borg. Wolf able to win that battle and earn the throw in. And now some more subs for the Friars as they will return Devoke, Davis Smith, and Tiago Mendonca to the field. Out go Griffin, Chisholm, and Santos. With under 15 minutes to play now here in half number two. Friars looking to hold on. It's Paolo Lima in the 25th minute. The difference so far. Roman will settle. Pushes it forward for Mendonca. Mendonca now will work to the corner. Drops it back for Duncan and all the way back now. Kawasmi with some pressure from Borg. And if anything, they are going to make the Seton Hall forwards and midfielders run. Serrano dribbled out of trouble for the moment. Devoke lost the handle, but it finds its way back to Kawasmi. Roman now wide for Duncan. Mendonca. Plays it for Roman, but cleared away by O'Leary. T 
Siebling able to win it for Elias. Now it comes near side for Navarp. O'Leary. Navarp looking to work that near side again with Tiebling. Mendonca takes a couple of shots from Tiebling. It was the initial grab from Tiebling as Mendonca tried to run away from him. That started that sequence that resulted in the foul. Avisa will come all the way up to take this one for the Friars as they have less than 13 minutes left here in the second half. And now they're going to stop the clock, saying the Friars wasting too much time. And they've been on the edge with that here in the second half. Now Visa blasted ahead. Fredrickson, the initial win. Devoke. Tackled away by Elias. And now Borg. Borg trying to turn the corner, gets past a trio of Friars and Duncan. Strong challenge at the end. Borg just couldn't quite get rid of it. Davis Smith now bodied off the ball that time. And again, you could feel the desperation for the Pirates here. In the closing minutes, the desperate need to find that equalizer. O'Leary, look for Borg, who's been all over the field here tonight. But a tough touch out of the freshman. And you can see some of the infighting with some of the Pirates. Their frustrations continue. Long toss down the near side. Sent back across for Nota. And he'll lift it ahead. Tiebling. Too strong from Vang that time. Tiebling. As it deflects off of Lima. Borg now will work it around with Boot. Elias furthers it along for Tremonti. Wide it comes. And that one is going to sail out of bounds off the Friars. Navarp will have the throw. Looks for Tiebling. Tiebling trying to get himself free, will push it wide. Wolf couldn't quite get there. Now the long distance shot, and what a save by Aviza as McLeod nearly struck for glory from long distance. Results in a corner kick coming up for the Pirates. Let's take another look at that shot from Sean McLeod. No hesitation, let it fly, and Aviza, the one-handed save to knock it. Into safe territory. Here comes a kick from McLeod. Into the mixer it goes. Flicked on by Kawasmi. Sent right back and the head will go wide from Elias. Again, Seton Hall continuing to create a couple of chances here down the stretch as we're now under 10 minutes to play. Often so much pressure on a team in these conference openers. Friars trying to take care of business at home. An important game against a team picked below them in the standings. You gotta protect that home field. You gotta take care of business against opponents that you need to. And now Vang trying to let it go from a good 30 yards out, but Nota. Able to retreat back in time. Heads up play by Vang, though, noticing the keeper out of position for a few moments. Here's Elias Borg. As he cuts towards the middle, leaves it off for Boot. 
Now McLeod, who nearly tied things up a few moments ago. DeVoke sends it all the way down to Nota. As he overshot his man, Davis Smith. Teebling on the run, and Aviza. Fearless playoff is line to grab it. Now he'll unleash the punt, but over the head of Roman on the near side. Checking back in now for the Pirates, Vittorio Argiri. Senior out of Genoa, Italy. Elias will leave it wide for Fredrickson. Connects with Argiri. So formational change with that last sub. Tremonti came out. Seton Hall pushing numbers forward here. As they try to knot things up in the final seven and a half minutes. Mendonca, Wolf, and Devoke. And an errant touch leads to a Seton Hall throw. Cut back from Teebling. Top of the box, Argiri trying to free himself up. And the spin denied that time as working inside was J.P. Marin. And now ahead, Smith, tough first touch. And Fredrickson will deflect it out of bounds. Now a couple of changes. They'll make it one change as Danny Griffin returns. And they're going to replace Espen Wolf. Again, outstanding minutes out of Wolf on that far flank. Wolf gets the applause from the crowd. There's a long toss from DeVoke. Has Mendonca in the corner. Tried to slip past the defender and does earn the corner kick. Seton Hall thought it was a goal kick, but the wily veteran Mendonca able to earn it, the corner for his side. Friars will bring Danny Griffin over to the far side to take this one. Now Providence did score off a short corner in the first half. But Serrano's going to stay home on this one as the Friars not taking any chances here down the stretch with five and a half to go. Griffin now towards the top of the box. Smith got a head on it. And it's going to be cleared his way by Marin. And Marin now able to push it ahead. Here's Borg. Leaves it wide for Argiri. Argiri plays it towards the net in a visa there once again for the Friars. Almost seemed like Argiri got caught in the middle of a cross and a shot. Long punt's going to be settled by Fredrickson. Now Navarp. D to D they go across for Fredrickson. McLeod will leave it off for James Boot. O'Leary now back for Navarp. And a misconnection that time, and Danta will leave it back for Duncan, who plays it up into the Providence bench area.
Pirates in a hurry here, trying to get the ball back into play. James Boot now looks onward for the Pirates. Borg takes a tough hit from Griffin, and that will be a foul. And Seton Hall is going to have to move the ball to the spot of the foul. It's going to be set up by James Boot, the freshman from England. Remember, Sean McLeod, the grad student from Scotland, says, I've got this. Friars trying to hold the top of that 18. And too much pushing and shoving before the kick. Clock will stop as we're going to have a conversation with the official Mendonca, Fredrickson, and a whole host of players there at the top of the 18. McLeod now resets himself. Big bending ball, knocked down, ball still loose. Mendonca able to block the shot from O'Leary. See if the Friars can get a counterattack going. DeVoke able to send it off of J.P. Marin. Up ahead it goes, Smith. And Smith is going to get called for a foul, even though it seemed that he was being held up by Fredrickson. Frustrating night for the big man of the Friars. As it comes wide now for Navarp. Two minutes to go, second half. 1-0 Friars on a 25th minute goal from Paolo Lima. As Vang spins out of trouble. Borg though with a recovery. And Borg, a man on a mission, just getting past everyone. And is shoved down by Griffin. Griffin's gonna get shown the card. As he came him high. And now some finger pointing from CJ Teebling with Mendonca and all kinds of shenanigans out there. And the officials got to settle things down. Now Teebling not wearing the captain's band. And we might see a card for Mr. Teebling as well. We'll see. He'll bring Mendonca and Teebling over. The handshake. As things getting heated here down the stretch of, and the importance of a conference game, you can't understate it. So after all that, the card was issued to Danny Griffin, the second yellow card on the Friars. And it'll be McLeod once again, who's put some very dangerous balls into the 18, especially here in the second half. Into the box it comes. Off an arm, but it was off an arm of a pirate. And now Friars just 90 seconds away from their first Big East win of the season. Aviza. And we have a liftoff. Long kick. And Davis just ripped down by Elias. Around it goes for Fredrickson. Final minute. Mendonca taken down. And now we're going to have a card on the Pirates. On oh, the tough challenge from J.P. Marin. He's frustrated. Mendonca slow to get up. Just 57 seconds remain. So the yellow to Marin here with 57 seconds. Slows things down for the moment. Friars trying to make the Lima goal from the 25th minute hold up here tonight. Serrano will have the restart here for Providence. Towards the corner it goes, looking for Smith. Nice win in the air for DeVoke. 
And clock stopped again as it was Elias who went down a little awkwardly after tangling with Smith. And that will stop the clock with 51 ticks. Elias, a pretty good jog though off the field. So he has to come off because the trainer went on. It's going to be a drop ball. Elias right back on. Up ahead it comes from Nota. Griffin trying to keep it alive on the near side. Under 30 seconds now, long toss towards the 18. Madonza the win in the air. Elias trying to track it down. It's gonna be another throw in opportunity here for Seton Hall. They're gonna have to hurry. Chaotic final minute here in Providence. Flicked up towards the net. Aviza the save, and that will do it. As the final seconds will tick away, and the Friars will take down the Pirates. 1-0 here tonight. Providence wins its Big East opener. They improve to 5-2 on the season. 1-0 in the Big East. Seton Hall drops its fourth straight game and will fall to 1-4 on the year and 0-1 in conference play. It's Paolo Lima, the hero tonight in the 25th minute, his second goal of the season, assisted by his countryman, Joao Serrano. Well, time for us to step aside for just a few moments. We'll be back with an interview. That's coming up next, right here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something. Time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save.
What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus, Time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Welcome back once again to Chappie Field here at Anderson Stadium where the Providence College Friars are victorious over Seton Hall and their season opener. Mike Mancuso now alongside Paolo Lima and Coach Craig Stewart. And we'll start with Paolo. Paolo, fantastic goal today. You found yourself wide open on the back end of a Serrano cross. Can you take us through that goal in your own words? Um, it was just a lot of practice. We've been wanting the set piece goal for a long time. It's, 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 a, good, it's a good goal today. The biggest opener, so yeah, we're happy. And how nice does it feel to come out on top in your first conference game of the season? Obviously, we've been working for this, so obviously it's nice, yeah. So thank you. That was Paolo Lima, who scored the game winner in tonight's game. Now we'll turn our attention to Coach Stewart. And Coach, you guys, from pretty much, for what I'd say, 90% of this game controlled most of the action. Of course, Seton Hall went on the offensive. But how proud are you of your guys for their performance tonight? Yeah, good. Uh, dug in when we had to. We're resilient when we had to be. And obviously, to keep a clean sheet is huge. Um, you know, I think for, for any of these guys, new guys, Paolo as well, you know, it's, it's a big East, you know, there's no easy games and you know teams are going to come at you and see you all know, put up a great account and, and went for it, you know, so we had to dig in, but we, we did that well. And how different is a big East game compared to just a regular season game? I mean, there seemed to be a lot more emotion, intensity, aggressiveness on the field tonight. Yeah, I just think it's a real competitive league, top to bottom. Like I said, there's no easy games, home, away, you know, it's different styles. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a really good league to be part of. Um, and that's a typical matchup in league play. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. That was head coach Craig Stewart and Paolo Lima, the goal scorer in tonight's Friar victory. That'll pretty much do it for us here at Chappie Field at Anderson Stadium. 
For everyone, our entire hardworking Big East Digital Network team, I'm Mike Mancuso saying so long from Providence.